it's time to order some chicks. I usually uh, grow some uh, broilers in the fall and then I grow some in the spring. And I also wanted to get some uh, Rhode Island Red uh, roosters. So I wanted to show you a thought process for you to consider because uh, I've done a lot of research over the last couple of years and I think I found a way to save just a few bucks. So the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, just a couple of the uh, hatcheries. So here's a Hoover's hatchery. You go in and you find these right here, Cornish Cross Broilers. And then you click on order now, and then you decide uh, which ones you would want to buy. And I'm only gonna get 20 this time. I When I had some extra family living here, I was doing uh, 30 actually two batches of uh, probably 20. So right now you have three different prices. You have the male, female, and the unsexed. Now some people will buy the males even though they cost a little more, but they mature faster. I've been buying the unsexed and truthfully it's been half and half. And the reason why I do this is because when I buy 20 chickens, it's a lot of work for one person to process 20 chickens at one time. So the males, since they uh, mature faster, one week I will do the uh, males and then the next week I will do the females. And it just worked out a lot better, especially when I was doing like 30 uh, chickens at a time. So that would allow me to do 15 one weekend and 15 the next weekend. That's kind of the way I did it. So something to think about that. Well, anyways, this is $2.50. And then unfortunately, <clears throat> one of these two, and I can't remember which one it was, uh, if I go all, th all the way through this, there's actually a uh, shipping cost that you have to add on to this. And then there's also, if you want to get some inoculations, those things add on, but they're relatively inexpensive. Now, when you go to Cackle Hatchery, uh, you go through their menu here and you get the meat broilers. And so here's the Jumbo Cornish Cross. And then they have... Uh, not sexed. Well, anyways, not sexed. If you wanted to buy 20 of them, it's $2.50. So that's the same price. But again, one of these, I can't remember which one it was. So uh, you end up having to pay shipping. I had been using the uh, tractor supply. And if you look, they actually have a, if you buy 40 of them, I did this last year and a friend of mine wanted some and uh, 40 of them for $69.99. That's a really good price. If you can do that many, and I had, I probably should have called him and done this instead because this is so much cheaper. Let me do a quick calculation here. So that's $1.74 a piece. So if you come over here and do this one, and you do the unsexed, so this is uh, $2.10. So this is cheaper going through uh, tractor supply. And in my case, I would want uh, two, of, uh, two of these sets of 10, but this, this would have been cheaper yet. I, for some reason, I missed that this morning when I ordered. Now, I also wanted to get some uh, Rhode Island Reds. So let's go back to uh, to look at that. All right, so they have uh, Rhode Island Reds here. And this is uh, 10 count chicks to get the better price. And I actually picked the unsexed. And so that's $2.50 a piece. And I figured uh, I've got some hens that I need to... Uh, older hens that I need to process. And so if I end up with, uh, I only need uh, one or two roosters and then the rest I'm just gonna process once they get older. But you gotta rotate your chickens about every year and a half or so. After two years, the egg production starts falling off significantly. So you ought to make yourself a stew chicken. So I wanted you to be aware, this is uh, something I've already ordered my, uh, my chicks and they'll be here probably the end of next week. And then the Cornish Rocks, they only take two months. And I, I grow them to full age. You don't have to. You can process them at six weeks. They'll be about a six pound chicken and uh, so maybe four pound finish. But if you do the full eight to 10 weeks, let me tell you something, you're gonna have a 10 pound chicken and a seven pound processed. That's, a, that's what I like to do. I like to have the full size and that is excellent size for my wife and I. So. Just think about that. It's it's a great bird. Now, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about doing this. In fact, my channel, I have a directory up there shows you exactly what I do, but I'll be going through it again this year because this is a fantastic way to grow your own meat.
I've got one broody hen that I keep every morning. I have to bring her outside and she sits there for a while. And that one is just raising heck for some reason. But look at some of my younger chicks are starting to lay eggs now. So this is that uh, one of the fancy feet chickens and this is my younger, whoops, almost dropped it. This is one of my younger Rhode Island Reds and this is the normal Rhode Island Red. But uh, she'll usually sit there for a few minutes and then she kind of breaks out of her days and then she'll get up and just start running. She'll run over to the water and then she'll go downstairs and or down to the lower level over here with the rest of them and she'll start uh, scratching for a little bit and then she comes back up and then she gets back in. Normally when they get into this type of mindset, you actually have to take them and separate them. So I may have to put her down at this lower level and separate them till she gets out of this uh, broody state. Listen to her making her noises. But she sits in there and people will lay eggs right on top of her because she won't move. I'm waiting for her to get going. Come on, baby. You got to get up and go. Well, I didn't get a chance to get my video going, but I had to grab a snake out of the chicken house, and uh, I grabbed him by the tail. He had an egg in his mouth, and I just uh, whacked his head right on the wall here, and I think I've killed him. But the egg went flying down the hill. But, you know, if you don't take care of these snakes, they will kill your chickens. This is a smaller one, but I had a big one last year that was so greedy, and I kept coming out every day several times a day getting my eggs because he was eating these things and uh, so since I had taken away his egg source he grabbed one of my chickens even though it was like way too big for him to eat he killed the chicken and was trying to swallow it really aggravated me so you got to keep on top of it these uh, snakes even though they're not poisonous they're dangerous to your livestock so I've I took care of this one but uh, I hate killing things but they'll just keep coming back so I wanted to show you or remind you that I had built these uh, wood racks two years ago and I just did a major improvement where I've uh, put a floor down, which makes it so much nicer. So this is my firewood racks that I have for the upper level. And now I'm working on uh, my lower one. We just added another 12 foot section and it's, uh, we got the posts in the ground. Now I just got to get a few more pallets and then I'm going to build my uh, roof over the top of this. And, you know, it keeps everything nice and dry, but this is a fantastic, I got to nail the bottom fence pickets down on this one here. And then I'm just going to fill this up and I'll have uh, three racks up above. So I have two 12 foot and a 10 foot. So I put a 10 foot in the middle and this will be uh, a 10 foot and a 12 foot. And then I've got a 12 foot against the house over here. That one eventually, I've got to use all that wood up so I can put the fence pickets on the bottom, make it a lot easier for stacking. But we've been working down here at the lower level too. I had a whole bunch of uh, leftover rough sawn lumber when I had built all my structures. And it's just been sitting here in the rain. So the other day we just started cutting it up and I'm going to make a kindling out of it. And I got a mix of oak and all kinds of stuff. And then I'm going to use... I got a few extra pieces here that I'm going to use for, you know, around the, those poles to wrap around the top to make the structure for holding my roof up. And I have all of these, uh, they're probably like one by three inch oak pieces that I had milled. And I'm going to use that uh, for finishing the inside of my wood shed that I had built. So that's on the list. They're all dry now. I bought them last year and some of them are getting pretty dang weathered. So I gotta, I gotta start using them so they don't uh, get too nasty looking. But there's a whole bunch of that. Cost me a little bit of money for that, but that'll be pretty. But my whole idea is I'm gonna clean this area out and then we're gonna make a lean-to roof coming off of this so that I could store like an ATV and other things out here. Maybe even my trailer up front, I can back it down here and have it out of the way. Um, but in the meantime, once I finish cleaning this up, I've got all that wood down at the bottom level. It's probably hard for you to see there. But I got a guy with a tractor that's gonna come in with a bucket and we're gonna pick all that up and bring it up here so that I can split it. Man, that rooster just likes to talk when I'm here. But I got all this wood I gotta split and, but I'll have another whole rack and a half I still gotta fill up. And even this other rack on the end isn't full yet, but that's all season. This is all pecan, and I probably have, good grief, I bet you that thing's stacked up six feet tall. So there's a couple cord there, and then I've got some cherry. Use this for smoking. 
but I got to get a tarp on this wood because that's all super seasoned, ready to go. And then I've got some, a bunch of big oak pieces that I got to split. I'm going to have to use my uh, wedges for this. But I was out picking uh, vegetables this morning. I had some okra that I had to pick. I wanted to show you asparagus. I don't know how many people grow asparagus, but my asparagus bed is just going crazy. I need to get out here and pick some and actually eat it. This year you could actually start eating some of this. But my beds need to be thinned out again and weeded and everything. My green beans are basically done. I got a few green beans here. I got to go see how many pole beans I've got. I got to show you my Tabasco plant because I've just been picking and picking and picking. And look at how many are still on this thing. And I'm telling you, this plant is taller than I am. And surrounding it, I've got bell peppers and jalapenos. And I just picked all them yesterday. But I bet you I still have two more quarts that I got to pick. There's some really nice fat ones. I like to pick them when you look at these. See how this one where my thumb is? I like to pick them when they're that thick. And then when I come out here about every two or three days, in fact, there's an orange one in there. I pick up a couple orange ones and it makes it nice and colorful. But even these uh, that are not quite yellow, when you uh, put them in the vinegar, they all turn like a fairly uniform color. So they don't have to be all different colors and the more you pick the more peppers you get and that's exactly what's been happening fantastic plant you know I don't think I had shown you my uh, rose of Sharon bush this thing is just loaded with buds and it's uh, starting to get some really good blooms going this probably needed to be more in an area where it could get the morning Sun but right now it just gets afternoon and it's looking really good in my uh, <clears throat> butterfly bush here I got to trim this back it's trying to grow over my bed here away from the house so I need to trim it away from that in fact there's a butterfly on there right now beautiful butterfly anyways everything's uh, everything's doing wonderful I'm out here picking some more peppers first thing in the morning before it gets too hot all right so I'm looking at what I got here I got a bunch of bell peppers I got a bunch of okra it looks like my green beans are starting to peter out now, getting fewer and fewer far between. Look at the jalapenos, though. I just uh, I just took about half of this and made uh, salsa the other day. It looks like I got salsa. Going to have to be made some more. And then a whole bunch of uh, Tabasco peppers. So the other day, I got uh, seven quarts plus a, a pint. And I made that pints like super hot for m one of my uncles. But uh, this is fantastic. And then there's a bunch of green beans that I just did the other day too. So those are all uh, ready to go. But um, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of doing with that many bell peppers and that many jalapenos. I've already got a gallon and a half of sliced uh, jalapenos. So I might as well just make some more salsa. Oh, this stuff is so addictive though. I did find a recipe using uh, making your own barbecue sauce from ketchup and that actually worked out fantastic because I was out of barbecue sauce. Today I will be making a bunch of jalapenos and I'll probably be filling up that char with Tabascos. This is fantastic just every day you got to figure out what to do with what uh, God's provided and these probably these uh, okra I'm gonna have to can them so that'll be a little bit of work too. It's actually pretty simple you just kind of wash them and some okra has these uh, I don't know what you call them say little spines on them these are waxy smooth they don't have that uh, like I grew last year so these are I guess they call them spineless I'm not sure but these just clean up and you slice them up and throw them in a jar with water and a little bit of salt and can them turns out fantastic and you use it for gumbo and fry it up whatever you like my favorite is frying I have to admit I am a fried okra fan I love fried okra this is another day of just Whatever you can do. I need to go do some weeding outside a little bit more. Keep things under control. So I actually got quite a few green beans. The, my pole beans actually are the ones still producing, but everything's kind of slowing down there. My tomatoes are looking really good. They're really loaded with tomatoes. This is my second batch. These will usually do all the way until, uh, until November, depending on when we get our first freeze. Dang, I see a ripe one down there. Missed it. You gotta look all the way around these things. Ah, oh, crap. It looks like it's way overripe. Yep, I missed that one. It split all the heck from all the rain the other day. I should have come out and picked this thing. That's a shame. I wanted to show you my sweet potatoes are like growing vines all the way up my driveway here. We've been eating the watermelons coming off of this thing, but I'm, I'm curious how long before these sweet potatoes do well. I still got about four or five watermelons I got to pull out. 
and then this thing's got to be weeded like crazy and then I'm going to start planting my uh, fall crop. I got to start doing this pretty soon. So I'm running out of daylight, folks. Winter's going to be here. Hey, how many of y'all are aware? I know my hair is all messed up. I've been out here working, but uh, it was like 55 degrees or something this morning. It's not even September. I think winter's coming early this year. That's one of the reasons I'm trying to get all my wood racks done. Like I said, I got to get my beds ready. We had two cold fronts during the summer. Very, very unusual. Never seen them reach this far down in the summertime like that. Got a whole bunch of salsa I'm making. I got like nine quarts that I got to can up today. Trying to get my green beans and okra so that I can can them all at the same time. You know, while you got everything going, some of the, like the salsa, you just do the boiling canner thing, but the uh, the pressure canner for like green beans is 25 minutes after you get it up to pressure. It takes quite a while up to that point. Anyways, I gotta go in and get all this stuff done. It's a beautiful day. Probably shouldn't be inside, but I was outside all day yesterday, so I gotta catch up on my inside canning and everything. I'm just curious, how much salsa do you make at a time? Ooh, my my mouth is on fire. I just made eight quarts of salsa and I'm trying to use up some of my bell peppers and jalapenos, but I always forget that the uh, the summer jalapenos, those suckers are hotter than uh, the fall ones. So I loaded this thing up and it's uh, it's ridiculously hot. Even though jalapenos in general only get about up to 8,000 Scoville units, but I did about a quart of ground up jalapenos and about a quart of bell peppers in here with about six quarts of uh, crushed tomatoes and about 30 ounces of Sonny's barbecue sauce. That's my secret recipe. Oh, and I forget, like three pretty large sweet onions. So anyways, that sucker is uh, done and I got to quit eating because it's it's killing me right now. So anyways, I got to jar this stuff up. There's a, and I got to get this in the boiling canner so it's not too late tonight. But that's a lot of, a lot of salsa, but you got to use up your peppers. Let me show you what I got left. Problem is I'm going out there every day and I'm picking more. And so I knocked this down to what I thought was half, excuse me, a couple days ago. And it's filled back up again. So I'll probably have to do some more, um, <laughs> Salsa tomorrow. I still got green beans I got to do and okra I got to get canned. I bought plenty of uh, crushed peeled tomatoes. So this will make two more pretty good sized batches. That'll be uh, plenty of salsa. I don't know. Some of y'all must think I just sit around making videos all day, but it's complete opposite. Uh, was outside all day yesterday working on my uh, wood racks and kind of cleaning up some of the garden. And today I'm canning. I just, I've got, uh, let's see, a quart and a half of uh, okra that I'm canning today, a quart and a half of green beans. I've got eight and a half quarts of salsa that I'm canning. And then I've got a couple pints of Tabasco peppers. And then I picked my, I don't think I talked about this, eggplant. First eggplant I ever grew. Looked pretty doggone nice too. Let's see if I can talk to wife into doing some eggplant parmesan tonight. Maybe I'll just do it myself. But anyways, this uh, doesn't happen by itself. So I went and uh, met with Beth and John last night in their whole group. A whole bunch of people. I'll never remember all their names, but it was, uh, it was a good time. All right, we got our first watermelon. We had it in the fridge overnight for a couple days, and uh, it's ready to be cut. There's my wife's hand to give you an idea. This thing's a pretty good-sized watermelon from our garden. I'm pretty excited. Let's see what it looks like inside. All right, so there we go. That actually looks pretty doggone good. Can you cut me a little piece so I can try it? That's pretty good. Mmm, nice and sweet. Nothing like doing something from your own garden. Anyways, I was kind of curious how that would work out. We still got about six more out there. Hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.